hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel today i'll be taking you on shell navigation without any further ado let's get started so today we need to ask ourselves what is a shell a shell is basically a program that interprets command it also allows user to execute commands by typing them manually on the terminal or a command line or automatically in programs called shell scripts. As we advance in shell, I'll get to teach you more about shell scripting. A shell is also not an operating system. It's simply a way to interact or interface with the operating system and run commands. So basically there are several commands we use in navigating the Linux file system which one out of many is the pwd which simply means print walking directory this pwd simply shows the current location in your directory tree for example if you're in a directory called desktop and you impute pwd in your command line the terminal will simply tell you that you're in a directory called desktop cd cd simply means change directory when typed all by itself it simply returns you to your home directory all right it changes this helps you to change from one directory to another cd directory simply changes into the specified directory name example cd for slash user src linux would take you to the Linux directory, which is a child of the SRC directory, which is also a child of the USR directory. We'll practicalize that in the command line. CD tile is an alias for your home directory. It can be used as a shortcut to your home. So whenever you use the CD tile, it takes you directly to your home directory or other directories relative to your home. There are several other commands we use in navigating the shell command lines. Example, the cd2 period moves up one directory. This command is synonymous to the cd hyphen. For example, if you are in home user directory and you type the cd double dot or the cd hyphen, you will end up in the home directory. This simply means that the cd double dot will take you from the user directory to the home directory here. That's what this simply means. The same thing is true for the CD hyphen. If you type CD hyphen in your command line, if you're in the user directory, it will take you one step backwards to your home directory. So CD hyphen returns to previous directory, an easy way to go back to your previous location. Also, we have the ls command. The ls command simply lists all files in the current directory in column format. Right? The ls also accepts an argument, hyphen l. This hyphen l simply lists files in long formats, one file per line. This also shows you additional information about the file, such as the ownership, the permission, the date, and the size. You will learn more about ownership and permission when we are talking about the shell scripting. LS also takes an argument hyphen A, which simply lists all files, including the hidden files. So note, the A here simply identifies all the hidden files. Hidden files are those files that begins with a period. Example, the period bash underscore history file in your home directory. LS also takes an argument hyphen A, which simply lists all files, including the hidden files. The reason why these hidden files are listed is because of the flag hyphen A that has been listed here. Okay, so hidden files are those files that begins with a period. Example, period bash underscore history file in your home directory so whenever you want to view a hidden file in a particular directory you use the ls hyphen a where the ls is going to list the, all the files in that directory and the hyphen a will target those hidden files 
So, working with files and directories. Okay, here now, we have the first command, which is the cat command. Cat command simply helps you preview the content of a file on your command line. It displays the content of a text file on the screen. For example, cat mp3 files.txt would display the content of the file mp3 files.txt. Cat displays the content of a text file on the screen. Cat serves as a preview for all files. So if you use cat mp3 files.txt for example, it will display the content of mp3 files.txt on the command line. Cat simply displays the content of a text file on the screen. For example, cat mp3 files.txt would display the content of files mp3 files.txt. The cp command, on the other hand, is simply used to copy one file to another. It simply duplicates the file. So whenever you use the cp command, you're trying to duplicate a file, all right? I'll show you how to do that in the command line. We also have the MV command, which plays two key roles. One, it moves the file from one location to another. And then secondly, it renames a file, right? So the MV moves the file to a new location or renames it. For example, MV mp3 files.txt simply moves the mp3 files.txt to tmp it copies the file to tmp and deletes it from the original location we also have the command rm which simply deletes a file for example rm tmp mp3 files.txt rm here will simply delete the mp3 files.txt from the directory tmp we also have a command called mkdir, which simply makes or creates a directory or what is popularly called a folder. Example, mkdir, my files, will simply create a folder or a directory called my files in the directory called tmp. rmdir simply removes or deletes a directory. Example, rmdir tmp4 slash my files will delete the directory called my files from tmp remember this files was earlier created here so rmdir will delete the file if it is empty in a scenario where my files is not empty this command will return an error while you're trying to delete it then you will need to introduce what we call a flag hyphen r to delete it i'll show you that when we are on the terminal so guys let's experiment all these commands we've earlier talked about for example the pwd will simply tell us that we are in a directory called home so once i hit enter we have a response from pwd which simply tells us that we are in a directory called home now remember we have the cd command the cd command simply helps us to change the directory all right so when we say cd forward slash it will automatically take me to the root to the root directory all right so once i hit enter i'm currently in a root directory all right also if i say cd forward slash home forward slash ubuntu it will take me to the ubuntu directory which is a child of my home directory so once i hit enter i'm currently in my ubuntu directory which is simply a child of the home directory. So when I say cd child, it will automatically take me to the home directory, right? Once I hit enter, I am in the home directory, right? This is the home of my super user directory, right? So the same is true. Let me go back to the home Ubuntu. So I am currently in the Ubuntu directory here. So when I see cd dot dot, it will automatically take me from Ubuntu directory to the home directory. Remember we said earlier that the cd dot dot will take us one step backwards. So once I hit enter, I am currently in the home directory. And then the same is true. 
The same is true for CD hyphen. It will take me one step backwards from Ubuntu directory to the home directory. Let's see if that works. Yes, so I'm currently in my home directory. All right. So remember, we said ls simply lists the content of a particular directory for us. Currently, we are in the home. So let's see what is the content of our home directory. So once I hit ls and I hit enter, these are all the content of my home directory. All right. Remember, remember to always use the ls command, especially when you're on your terminal, because this ls command will serve as your eye in the command line. It tells you what is inside where you are. It tells you where you are. So remember I said the ls also takes flags hyphen l, which simply not only list the content of a directory but also it lists them with several properties in a long format so once i hit enter now we can see that this directory called betty was created on september 8th right it has a read write execution mode for for the user the read and execution write for the group and then the read and execution write for others you're going to learn that later on in my subsequent videos all right so we also said that the ls also take a flag hyphen a we simply list the hidden files so let's find out if we have any hidden files in the home directory so once i hit enter now you can see that we have this and this are some hidden directories here in the home directory so now that is all for the ls now we can move further to look at um the cat command remember i said cat simply helps you to preview the content of a file let's say i want to write something to a file my my name is daniel for instance right my name is daniel and then i give this daniel.txt as the name of the file right then I want to preview when i hit ls i can see i just created daniel here now i want to preview the content of daniel right so once i cut daniel.txt and i hit enter this is the preview i am talking about it simply previews the content of daniel on your command line so that's basically what the cat does and then the cp command the cp command here remember we said it copies a file. It helps you copy a file. Now, let's assume we want to make two copies of Daniel. One to go to a directory called Ubuntu, and then one should still be in the home directory. So I'll simply do this, cp, paste, and then I type the file I want to copy, daniel.txt, and then I, I simply include the directory where I want it to go to. In this case, I want it to start from the super user home directory, and then it should go into the home directory that is inside the super user home directory, and then drop it inside the Ubuntu directory for me. So once I hit enter, I should have a copy of Daniel in Ubuntu. Let's find out. So we need to change directory to Ubuntu to see if actually we have a copy of Daniel there. So once I hit enter and I hit ls, you can see that we have we have Daniel here now. Yeah, so that command simply worked. So now we also have another command called the mv command. What is the what does the mv command do? It simply I told you earlier it plays two key roles. It moves a file, it also renames a file. All right, so let's assume we want to rename daniel.txt to michael.txt. I'll simply use the mv daniel.txt, which simply tells the command line, hey, I want to rename daniel.txt to michael.txt. Right, so once I hit enter and then I hit ls. You will see that there's we no longer have Daniel here, but rather we will now have Michael, right? So that simply works. And now, the next um, role the MV command plays is to move. So let's say we want to move Michael 
txt to ubuntu we simply use the command mv the name of the file michael and the direction or the navigation where we want to move it to in this case we are moving it to home ubuntu so once i hit enter once i hit enter oh sorry um the michael.txt is already in ubuntu so i need to move it elsewhere so let me move it to home instead so once i hit enter and then remember we are we are actually in ubuntu which is the child we're actually in ubuntu which is the child of the home so we need to go one step backward to see michael so here is michael i just moved if i go one step forward to ubuntu you will see that we no longer have michael here all right so that's simply what the mv command does so we have the rm command now we simply removes a file right let's assume i want to remove michael i simply use the rm michael and then i hit enter michael is out once i hit the ls command again we no longer have michael here i can simply go ahead to re remove more files i can see rm junior daniel daniel everything goes right once i hit enter and hit ls again we no longer have junior neither do we have daniel right then fin finally we have the mkdir command which simply makes directory or what we popularly know as folder let's just say make folder so once i hit enter we will now have a folder called folder so once i hit ls you can see that we have folder here right now we have another command called called the rmdir but before i will get there if you want to make more than one folder you can just impute the name of the folder folder two folder three and so on and so forth and just hit enter you cannot create folder because we already have folder but it will definitely create folder two and folder three so once we hit ls we now have folder two here and folder three with folder one inclusive. So the final command before we call it a day for this episode is the RMDIR, which simply removes directories. So if I type RMDIR and I say folder and I hit enter, this removes folder, right? Let's verify. Now we don't have the first folder. We now have these two folders. Now let's assume I want to remove the second folder, but this time I want to remove it using the RM. Remember the RM also removes things, it removes files and folders. So I say folder two, right? And I hit enter. Say, okay, it cannot remove folder two because folder two is a directory. Now for us to remove folder two, I simply need to add a flag hyphen R and hit enter and folder two is out all right so basically that's just how to navigate through the shell system the shell terminal and also how you can list the content of your working directory also preview the content using cats and also copy the content using cp also move or rename the content using the mv command also remove the file or folder using the rm command also make a folder or a directory using the mkdir and then finally removing any directory using the rmdir i hope you learned something today if you did please and please hit the like button hit the subscribe button Hit the notification button so that when I make subsequent content like this, you will be the first to be notified. Please, guys, see you in the next video.